to northeast at about 45 miles per hour. That's the problem with these storms. We warn on them, but they're moving so fast ahead of the main line themselves. That's when we have to keep an eye, and that's why we're kind of watching these thunderstorms. And whether touching the ground or not. Yeah, you can look right there on Storm Tracker 6, right north of the Madisonville area, right where this uh, green and red kind of come together, if you will, south of Hiawassee College near Madisonville. And again, you can also look inside the, and see the wind strengths being estimated. 54 mile per hour winds being estimated there, 43 there. So basically what we're seeing is a strong circulation between Hiawassee College and Madisonville right along 411, and that would be where the worst part of this storm would be. So moving through portions of Monroe County right now, if you are in Madisonville, you are in Hiawassee College up towards Rockville and Bonnewar, go ahead and get to your safe area now. We always say put as many walls between you and the outside as possible. If you have a basement, that's your best bet. Don't try to out that's going to be a problem for today could actually cause some damage in some spots and then thunderstorms will be hitting our way soon so let's get right to it wow. for today so hold on tight to the steering wheel uh, if it's garbage day don't forget to bring the trash can in after the garbage people come early this morning because it's going to be one of those kind of days it may end up down the street check on your forecast we're here <laughs> in the storm center. i like when you come over here it makes you look like a giant this is great i'm not for once for for in my life i'm actually tall <laughs> Happy New Year. I'm about 5'9 on a good day for those that haven't met me. I like this. Just bring yeah. that. Give me a Forecast. Start. Give us a short, <laughs> a short version of the forecast. <laughs> no pun intended, but a short version of the forecast. <laughs> explanation of how tornadoes form here in East Tennessee. We average about four a year back across the middle part of the United States in an area called Tornado Alley. They can see thousands per year, but they generally form the same way. Cold, dry air moving in from the west, warm, moist air coming in from the south. The combination of these causes the air to rotate in the mid levels. Eventually, what will happen is this rotating air will turn from a horizontal direction to a vertical direction within the thunderstorm itself. This is called the updraft of a thunderstorm. Let's slice this storm in half, get a little bit better view of this. Again, what will happen? The updraft within the storm rotates over time. It rotates faster and faster, and eventually what will happen from this rotating storm, you'll get a lowering or a rain free area of the cloud that's called the wall cloud. From that wall cloud descends the actual funnel itself. Once that funnel touches the ground, that's when you officially have a tornado. You may want to grab that jacket 40s and 50s starting out this morning. Should be a little warmer though by this afternoon. Just a few more clouds and part of the cloud cover is due to a tropical system down across Cuba and it, that'll continue to influence our weather through tomorrow. This morning though pretty quiet 57 degrees. Can't rule out a little bit of patchy fog to start but otherwise quick warm up to 71 by noon with sunshine. Then as that tropical what will probably be tropical storm Nicole later today moves north it kind of increases the cloud some across our area right on into the evening hours but this morning mainly clear and chilly 43 Monticello 51 right now Crossville we're at 57 here in Knoxville look at the hour by hour temperatures pretty decent warm up six timeline shows by 330 mid even some upper 70s in the valley again depends on how much sunshine you see low to mid 70s for the plateau in southeast Kentucky but 60s in the in higher elevations of the Smokies over to western North Carolina and probably only around 61 in Asheville by that time because of increased cloud cover and chances of rain. Here's what I'm talking about. This flow of moisture again, storm system still well south of Florida, but look at all the rain that's streaming northward this morning up through the Carolinas. This will have an impact on our weather and I'll explain why. Six timeline, seven o'clock this morning. It's clear all the way up through lunchtime, so no problems there, just sunshine. Clouds increase a bit though as we go through the afternoon on into the evening hours and by later tonight some of that moisture makes its way up towards the Tri-Cities into western North Carolina and overnight into tomorrow morning can't rule out a stray shower anywhere in the valley over into the mountains while the plateau stays mainly dry. This should move out pretty quickly though as the storm system races up towards the northeast on Thursday. So about a 30 40 percent coverage valley into the mountains for tomorrow. Plateau stays dry and the rest of the week looks pretty good cooling off significantly for the weekend falling into the 60s for highs and during the daytime Sunday 40s at night. That's your forecast. Let's get a check of the roads again with Bo.
all those areas are going to continue to see rain like that throughout the day today, so the flooding concerns are unfortunately only going to get worse. For us, just stray showers across the area, mainly to the east, so valley into the mountains. Sunshine quickly returns tomorrow, and then a big cool down for the upcoming weekend. Wait till you see these temperatures in the six-day forecast. We're overcast 64 right now. Between now and lunchtime, probably just past that, I'd say 1 or 2 o'clock. Can't rule out a stray shower or two here in the valley, but then we'll dry out and clear out as we go through the day. Highs today right around 75. Here it is. This is the center of what was Nicole right here, almost due east of Orlando. But look at the pipeline of moisture stretching all the way up through the Carolinas, all the way up through the D.C. metro area and northward up through the Metroplex this morning. Huge amounts of rain here. I want to show you this, though. We're not directly impacted with that, but there's a little upper level spin right there in the atmosphere over North Georgia. That's what's going to impact our weather for today. That's what's already produced a few scattered showers here this morning, traveling down towards the south and west. So a few more pop-up showers possible here. But here's what I expect on six timeline. Shows these random showers in the valley and the mountains between now and about noon into three o'clock. Sunshine, though, back across the plateau. So I think you're dry throughout the day today. This continues to rotate out north and east by 6 o'clock. We're drying out, clearing out. Plateau, you're fine, but still some lingering showers, mainly east of the Knoxville area. Then everybody's fine by 11 o'clock tonight. So kind of a one-day event, a few scattered showers. We're looking good Saturday, Friday, 70s. Not bad at all, but much cooler for the weekend with some cloud cover. We're talking upper 60s for highs. 40s for lows. That's your forecast. Let's get an update on the commute with both. It's 5:46, and we are talking about your forecast on this Friday morning. A lot of folks have weekend plans. A lot going on in downtown Knoxville tonight. Yeah. Hopefully things will be nice for them. No problems whatsoever. Maybe getting a little cooler though, especially by the end of the weekend. So we can work with that. Yeah, start thinking about <laughs> where those sweaters are, where the light jackets are, long pants. Think you're going to need them this morning. Crisp but dry. Lots of afternoon sunshine on tap. Temperatures about where we should be this time of year, but 60s. Yep, 60s for highs by the end of the weekend. We're at 60 right now. Clear sky will drop into the mid-50s by 8 o'clock and then a quick warm-up. Again, like the desert, cools quick at night, warms up quick in the afternoon. 67 by lunchtime, 76 pleasant. That's right where we should be this time of year for a high on the first day of October. 3 degrees cooler right now compared to 24 hours ago. 8 degrees cooler up in Middlesbrough. So most of us are a little cooler starting out right now compared to this time yesterday. 55 in Middlesbrough, 60 here. Touch warmer, 64 in Oak Ridge. The wind is up just a bit. And where you have that wind, it's going to be a little bit warmer this morning. If the wind is lighter, you're going to be cooler. But the wind should die down just a bit before sunrise and then pick back up this afternoon. Temperatures look pleasant, though. 76 here by 4 o'clock, 73 up in Middlesbrough, and upper 60s to near sending the mountains. Then, clear sky tonight, light wind. It's going to be cool. We're talking 40s by tomorrow morning at 8 a.m. 45 here, 49 La Follette, maybe around 42 in Maryville, where you see the lighter blue into western North Carolina, maybe some upper 30s, some of the higher elevations. It'll be chilly. Now, Today is going to be fun. Lots of sunshine. So I wanted to jump ahead to tomorrow. Six timelines showing lots of sunshine in the morning hours through lunchtime, right in and through the afternoon. So picture perfect day. Clouds start to roll in, though. Look by 6 o'clock on into the evening. That's the approaching cold front coming through. As it does, if there's enough moisture, it may ring out a sprinkle here or there right on into Sunday, but there really isn't much moisture with it. Main thing it's doing is cooling things down into the mid-60s for Sunday. That system, though, gets kind of cut off or stuck over East Tennessee. That means it's going to try to wring out a little bit more moisture, keep some cloud cover around, and definitely keep the cooler temperatures around. So 60s for highs, 40s for lows as we head into the weekend. So enjoy the sunshine today and tomorrow. That's your forecast. Let's get it up to date on the commute again with Bo. Broadways look pretty good. Get these warnings so far in advance ahead of where the actual storm is. So let's take a look, see where the storms are now, where the worst of the weather is. So we're going to focus up there in Campbell County where we have that active warning, the tornado warning. Looks like first part of that storm is just about to cross the border, heading up into southeast Kentucky right now, right off I-75 near Jellico. So that one storm cell there, moving north and east at about 50 to 60 miles per hour, but close to the Saxton area in the next couple of minutes. Uh, looks like Gatliff about seven minutes from now. And then this cell that's down in to southern Scott County, tracking north and east at almost 60 miles per hour. So almost on the back uh, heels of that other storm, coming near the Hickey area four minutes from now, Royal Blue about five minutes from now, and Block about six minutes from now as well. We'll keep an eye on those storms to the south as well, Matt, the ones that are developing back uh, into Monroe County and also into Ray County as they track to the north and east. Matt? 
All right, Ken, appreciate you get out of the way of these storms as they come through. They're very small, so some of you are seeing sunshine. Others are saying, what is coming my way? And they'll be in and out very quickly as they move northeast at about 50 to 60 miles an hour, Ken. And we're going to look southwest as well, because these are the storms with these moving so quickly to the northeast at 50 to 60 miles per hour. It's the ones downstream, if you will, that we'll need to watch as well, like down in uh, southern Bledsoe County, down in towards Chattanooga, just east of Cleveland. So a couple of these storms will be watching that one east of Cleveland. And then this one as well, southwest of the Dayton area, as these kind of rapidly move to the north and east at about 40 to 50 miles per hour. But the active warnings we have now, as you can see, I'd say those two cells, northern Cumberland County and the one crossing from Morgan into Scott County. Nothing officially for Cumberland County. The warning is actually out for northern Morgan into Scott counties, and this goes until 5 o'clock, so the next 20 minutes from now. Blunt County, I'd say at this point, you are okay. That storm has uh, definitely shrunk in stature and in size, and mainly affecting south East Knox County at this point. Again, we'll get a closer look at that one. You can see it's basically almost falling apart, it looks like at this point. Let me get a closer look. It's very, very small, but still looks like it's packing a bit of a punch right there north of the Kimberlin Heights area. It would be this area right through here where you see kind of that little backwards letter C, if you will, right through here. That would be the area where the strongest winds would be coming into that storm. That's where you possibly could be seeing the rotation or the funnel cloud from this storm. We've already had some reports that this did touch down near the Alcoa area and uh, also some pictures have been sent in. This was that same storm cell that actually came up through Monroe County. We've been following it uh, for about an hour and a half now, I think, as it's been uh, moving racing off to the northeast about 50 miles per hour. Still an active tornado warning for that cell right there near the Cumberland Heights area in southeast Knox County, almost about to cross I-40. So maybe do we have uh, the Asheville Highway TDOT Smartway camera? Maybe we can pull that up uh, on I-40 if we get a chance. We take a look at that and see what we have going on I-40 at uh, maybe east of... Uh, is that Asheville Highway right there? Okay. And maybe also we'll take a look at Strawberry Plains if we get a chance because it could be very close to that. Whatever the, the furthest east one, I think east of Strawberry Plains is the farthest east TDOT Smartway camera we have. But you can already see the spray being kicked up just from some of the rainfall that will be ahead of these storms. So even if uh, you're not seeing the tornadic activity like up towards uh, McMillan, the Wooddale area, that's some very heavy rainfall right there. South of the east of Maloneyville and uh, north of the Wooddale area, some very heavy rainfall with that. Okay, that looks like that may be the uh, east of Strawberry Plains right there. Uh, definitely look like some heavier rainfall on the interstate. But guys, just keep that up uh, if you get a chance. When the next little bit, we'll watch as this storm could be very close to crossing Interstate 40. In fact, let me put a track on this for you. Moving northeast at about 50 to 60 miles per hour. So this thing is really going to be racing if this holds together. And it would be very close to I-40. That's the Thorn Grove area in the next three minutes. So we'll just kind of keep an eye on that and see uh, if this actually comes across the interstate, if we see a funnel cloud or possibly even a tornado. Matt? All right, Ken. Thanks, Ken north of Wartburg, so right in between. So if you live in this area right here, this is Highway 27. Uh, watch for uh, that about to cross over 27 right there. We are seeing, again, some pretty intense uh, lightning with this cell as it's moving over your area. This is Pilot Mountain right through here. You need to go ahead and seek shelter from this storm as well. Again, not seeing rotation with it at this point, but again, you can see estimating maybe some one and a quarter inch size hail with this uh, as it's moving off to the east northeast at 33 miles per hour. This is the Anadel area right here. Pilot Mountain, Anadel, Sunbright, and this area right here is the Mill Creek region. This is moving again off to the north and east. Watch again for that storm. Matt, got Thank an update you, on the other one. Yeah. And also Morgan County, uh, we do have these severe thunderstorm warnings still in effect for your area. So uh, we're not ignoring you. Take a, a quick look at the computer if we could. Those are the Morgan Scott counties are under severe thunderstorm warnings. Still Union and Claiborne counties uh, under the tornado warning. So until 8.30 p.m., that's the severe thunderstorm warning for Morgan and Scott counties. We got a, a, an emailed picture of us. Josh Parker from Jacksboro, Tennessee sent us this. Kind of the calm after the storm. Look at the nice rainbow there after the storms that move through their area. Thanks a lot, Josh, for that. But Josh, Josh, you're not out of the woods yet. Let's go back to Storm Tracker if we could. Uh, this is the cell that has prompted the severe thunderstorm warning right over Pilot Mountain right now. And here's Jacksboro. So, Josh, not out of the woods yet if this holds together. So, uh, you know, be aware, stay tuned, and, and watch for this. We'll put a track on this storm again. Headed towards Pilot Mountain. It's right over the top of you right now. Sunbright, you're seeing this storm as well. Probably some very large hail with this. Mill Creek, 802. The Coal Hill area around 802. And Lone Mountain around 811 as this storm will be tracking into southern sections of of Scott County. So it's right on the border right now between Scott County and Morgan County. This is the border right here, kind of bisecting the storm track. Uh, Sunbright Pilot Mountain getting hit as hard right now with this storm as it's moving off to the north and east at about 35 miles per hour. Again, let's take a quick look, dissect this storm if we can. And you can see uh, hail seems to be the main threat with this. We're not seeing rotation.
vegetation, but some one-inch hail. Also south of the Rugby and Robbins area, seeing some of that hail with this storm right now. But again, it's right over the top of Pilot Mountain right now. Go ahead and get into your uh, protective, safe area. Again, uh, probably some gusty winds with this as well. Not seeing rotation again with this, but there is that potential again of uh, maybe seeing some uh, very large hail across the area near the Pilot Mountain area.